But every time there was something taken off, something was, I had the opportunity to grow. And on this side of the cross, I'm not sure we understand what being in His presence is like and the price it takes to get there. Sometimes we just show up and we think instead of us being impressed with God, we think God should be impressed with us. And though He loves you, and He is impressed with you because you're His creation, He would want the all to be on Him. Hey guys, this is Pastor Tommy. Thanks for joining us today at the church at Bushland. Man, we pray that your faith will be encouraged and inspired from today's message. So last week we jumped into um, the first part of a real quick two-part uh, series called The Altar. And uh, I used a drawing. I'm gonna ask the guys to pop that back up. I put a drawing up on the board. This is simply the tabernacle. If you were not with us, this is basically um, how they met with God in the Old Testament. This was what he instructed, what he put together. It was his design. Uh, these are different stations or altars that the people would come through. So you would start on the outside um, and then you make your way into the holy place and then make yourself into the holy of holies where you encountered God, where you met with him. And I said last week, we don't, we don't have to go to these measures today. But because of that, I do believe we missed something. Because each of these steps along this journey to meet, to get to the holy holies, to meet with God, something was stripped off of us in some kind, in some ways ripped off. But every time there was something taken off, something was, I had the opportunity to grow. And on this side of the cross, I'm not sure we understand what being in his presence is like and the price it takes to get there. Sometimes we just show up and we think instead of us being impressed with God, we think God should be impressed with us. And though he loves you and he is impressed with you because you're his creation, he would want the all to be on him, not on us. And so I posed, I posed a quest, couple of questions. Does God want to meet with me? Does God want to meet with me? If you looked at this, the answer is pretty simple, yes. He did all of that to get to you. And you do all of that to get to him. He wants that encounter. Can I tell you on this side of Calvary, he did the cross to get to you. So he wants to meet with you. He wants to. And I know the fight is, he don't want to meet with me like this. He don't want to meet with me the way I am today. He don't want to meet with me with the week I had, the weekend I had, the morning I had, the things I said, what I looked at, where I went, places I did. But I'm telling you, he does. And he doesn't want you to hide all that stuff. He wants you to bring that stuff with you because it is you, because you're carrying it. And he says, come to me. That's what he says. We don't have to clean up to have church. We don't. Somewhere we thought we had to put on the best suit and tie and a white shirt to get to church. And we started living in a masquerade kind of world where we put on different suits to enter different presence, presence and we fool people around us. I'm gonna tell you right now, we gotta get back to where we don't have nothing but what he gave us when he created us, and that's the earth suit. If we would just come raw to a raw savior, we'd walk out different. He'll clothe you in something. It's called his righteousness. 
Amen. And you can't pick out clothes like that. They don't even sell them. Does God want to meet with me? Oh, he does. So the real question becomes, do I want to meet with him? Do I want to meet with him? I hope the same answer is yes, because he's here. He is here. I said last week that how you enter has a lot to do with who you encounter. Hmm. Please hear that. See that diagram that was up there? How they entered <laughs> had a lot to do with who they encountered. The last of the places of the stations was the Holy of Holies. When they entered it with thanksgiving, they came into the holy place. As they went through those stations, they met in the holy of holies. See, how you enter has a lot to do with who you encounter. You can come in here all flipping. What's up, preacher? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? You'll encounter each other, which is, which is good. Fellowship's great. But see, it's time for the church to have more than fellowship. It's time for the church to have an encounter with a living God that'll change your life forever. Amen. I love fellowship with anybody. I'll break bread with anybody, anytime. I'll break it six times a day if I have to, just jog in between. But I'll break bread. Amen? I'll break bread with you. I can't get enough bacon. Bacon goes good with everything, right? What I'm saying is we can encounter each other just coming in here like we are, like we're at a ball game, Friday night or something. But when you come into a holy place to get to the holy of holies and encounter God, you got to come in different. You got to come in different. You got to come in with expectancy. You got to come in saying, God, make sure I'm right. Do in me first what needs to be done so I can encounter you. How you enter has a lot to do with who you encounter. You come in like that, you'll walk out different. I promise you. You start coming in like they walked into the tabernacle. Mm. My friend, whoo, you'll walk out different every time. Every time. So last week, I want you to go to Isaiah real quick because I just want to just touch it and then we're going to go to Mark. Isaiah chapter 6. <clears throat> Verse 1, Isaiah 6, 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphims, each with six wings. With two wings, they covered their faces. And with two, they covered their feet. And with two, they were flying. And they were all calling to one another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The earth is full of his glory. I want to stop because there's a lot in that. And I, if, we, if we have time, I want to get to it at the end. But, but here's what I want you to see. The train of his robe, as I said last week, filled the temple. As we were worshiping, he came in. Big time. He's still here. And the train of his robe is filling the temple. He's just coming down aisles. Coming down aisles. He didn't come to every church, trust me. But he's here. And so that leads us to ask a couple of questions. If he is here, which he is, and the train of his robe has filled this temple, then what do I do? What do I do about that? It's my move. It's my turn. I want you to understand that. We're going to look at it in Scripture in just a little bit. 
The train of his robe filled the temple. The train of his robe doesn't get in unless he's in it. You understand? The robe is him. He's here. So what do I do about that? It's my move. It's my turn. So what do I do? A lot of people here. And what do I do about that? I want you to go to Mark chapter five and see a very similar story. Mark chapter five. I want you to go to verse 24. Mark 5, verse 24. Pick up in 24. So Jesus went with him. This is the father who came to get Jesus because his daughter had just died. And this is why Jesus is on this journey right now. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, he came up behind him in a crowd and touched his cloak because she had thought, if I just touch his cloth, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she fell in her body. She felt in her body that she had been freed from suffering. Verse 30. And at once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched me? You see people crowding around against you. And his disciples answered, yet, you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who, what, what, who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembled with fear and told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from suffering. His robe has filled this place, the train of his robe. There was a crowd that day too. Crowd in here today. I want you to look at verse 26 carefully. Verse 28, did I say six? I'm sorry. Verse 28, very carefully. I read over this several times. You may have too, because I like getting to the good stuff where she touches him. But I want you to see her thought. But because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Ooh, you got to stop there for a second. There's a crowd. It's Jesus. He's walking. You know it's him. Okay, you know, without a doubt, you know, it. it's him. She'd been bleeding for 12 years. All the doctors couldn't help her. It doesn't say she, they helped her all. It says it got worse, meaning she's desperate. She don't have any other place to go. She's in a crowd of people. She's about to do something that is not customary. You don't do this. This is out of line. She's all sides. It's not the pedigree. It's not religious. It's not the way you do it in church. But Jesus is walking, and it's her one chance. Don't know when you get it again. Don't know when I'm going to gather again, and the train of his robe is going to fill the temple. He's here right now for this minute, this second. And she has this thought. 
What if? Mm. What if everything I've ever heard about him, everything that I know about him, what if it's true? What if I mm, take a chance and I step out of line and I touch him? What if, what if by chance, man, I could be healed? Nothing else has worked. I tried everything else, man. I'm tired of making appointments. I'm tired of going to doctors. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of being disappointed. Maybe you're here today. Your marriage is not where it needs to be. The honeymoon seems a long way away. And you tried everything. It ain't getting better. It's getting worse. But you came today. For this moment, you came. And the train of his road filled this room. And you know he's here. And it wouldn't look right. What would people think? And golly, I look goofy. But what if, oh, what if all that I've ever seen him do in other marriages, he could do in mine? What if I just take a chance? And step out and touch him. Could he heal it? Could he heal it? Could he heal it? My relationship with my son or my daughter, relationship with a parent, relationship with an ex, relationship with coworkers, broken relationship. What if? Hmm. What if I gave it to him? What if I touched him? What if I said, you take it? Could he heal it? What if you were sick and you've been to doctors and you tried everything and it just kept getting worse? What if today, what if? What do you got to lose? What if you believed him? What if, what if you took him up on the fact that his name is healer and you took a risk and you stepped out and you touched him? What if? What if you ever had that thought? Pastor, you said he wants to meet with me. God wouldn't want to meet with me. He don't know how nasty I am. Oh, he knows how nasty you are. He was with you at everything you did. But what if he could make you new right now? If only you touch him. You think he could make me new? Oh, yeah. He's made worse than you new. Worse. What if you took him up on his word? What if? Verse 30. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched me? That is a powerful statement. Who touched me? Verse 31 says this. You see the people crying against you, his disciples answered, and yet, and yet, you can ask, who touched me? Who touched me in this big old crowd? How are we supposed to know who in this big crowd stepped out and touched you? How? Can I say this to you? He always knows who touches him. He always knows who touches him. This morning, as the train of his robe fills this worship center, if you stepped out and touched him, he would know it's you. He would. Because here's what I know about Jesus. He sees you. He said, nobody sees me, preacher. I used to think that too. I did. My second chance at second grade. 
I didn't think nobody saw me. But Jesus in the form of an angel with a hairnet on her head, giving out tater tots to kids in a line at lunch, came and sat at a table beside me, stuck a bony arthritis, crippled up finger in my chest and said, young man, you'll be a leader one day. He sees you. He's got big things for you. I thought nobody saw me that year, not even my mom and dad. Can I say something to you? He sees you right now. He sees your marriage. He sees who you are, where you are, where you've been, what you've seen, and what you've done, and what you've said. He's seen your week. He's seen your weekend. He sees you right now. He sees you. You know what he's trying to get you to do? He's baiting you to take him at his word. That's what he's doing. He's got you in his presence one more time. And you don't know how many you're gonna get, but you're here again. And he's got you and he's captured your mind. And he's captured your heart right now. And you see him, boy. You see him just like that woman saw him. You see his robe and it's, fit, it's coming all down your aisle. And you see him. If you will just step out with some West Texas guts and touch him, it changes just like that. I'm telling you, he sees you. He sees you right now. He not only sees you, but he knows you. He K-N-O-W-U, you. -U. He knows you. He knows you in the darkness. He knows you when no one else sees you. He knows you. And you know what? He still loves you. Crazy about you. Crazy about you. He's so crazy that he drew you here this morning and he's captured your heart and your mind. And he's looking at you right in the eyes. And he says, I know you, but I love you. Take me at my word. <laughs> and let me set you free. He not only just sees you, and he not only just knows you, but you know what he wants? You know what he really wants? He wants you to touch him. That's what he wants. He wants you to touch him. I don't care what your job title is. It doesn't impress God. But if you touch him, that'll get his attention. That'll impress him. Can I say something to you? Physical movement, always, listen to me, church, physical movement always releases Holy Spirit power. Every single time that you move physically, the Holy Spirit's power is released. You see what he says in that script right there? Somebody touched me because power left my body. <laughs> Why did he leave his body? Got bored being there? Got tired? It left him because somebody that didn't have any power that needed a healing touched him. It is a transfer that happened from Jesus to the woman. Why? Because she stepped out and touched him. That's why. Mm, I wish I had more time. 33 and 34. I want you to see it again. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from suffering. Mm. I'm going to say this to you. Touchy subject, but I'm going to say it to you. God is very much still in the miracle business. Very much. It won't stop until he returns, and it sure won't stop then. He's going to get bigger, all right? The power of miracles and healing is still present today. I promise you. Healing, healing, that's up to God. 
He leans up to God. Period. I'll say it again. Healing is up to God. Period. Healing's up to God. Movement, watch this, movement is up to me and you. Right? Our movement can produce that. Have It can engage our faith. It can get his attention. She touched him. She moved first. Then power transferred to her. The healing happened. Faith must move you or it's not faith. Just saying. Faith must move you or it's not faith. James 2.14 says this. What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save him? James 2.18 says this, but someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds. I'll show you my faith by what I do. Simple as that. He said, you're telling me if I move, I'll be healed. I'm telling you, if you don't move, you don't have a chance. I'm saying you got to move in order for God to do what God wants to do. If God wants to heal you, he'll heal you. If it's physical on this dirt ball, be physical on this dirt ball. If it's physical in heaven, it'd be physical in heaven. But I promise you this, anytime you move towards God, you will not lose. Never. I get tired of people saying, well, I'm not, I'm not even gonna, it's wrong for me to ask. No, it's not wrong for you to ask. He wants you to ask. He wants your faith to be big enough for you to step. If you'll step, you can't stop what God wants to do. Some of us are so stubborn, really such jerks. I'm going to say it, that we won't even move. That's wrong. That's wrong, man. You serve a God whose name is healer. At least you can do is honor him and respect him enough to step in his name. Step in his name, man. Don't tell me he's a big God, awesome God, great God, terrific God, wonderful God, wonderful counselor, mighty God, all this stuff, if you're not willing to step. Don't sing me a song if your feet ain't gonna back it. Just be quiet. He is a healer and he's a miracle worker. Are you gutsy enough to step out there in it? Some of you won't even allow yourself to do it because you don't want like some freak. I'd rather be a freak for Jesus than a bump on a log. Sometimes you got to get a little, little bit nasty, a little bit sloppy for Jesus, okay? Sometimes you got to believe enough to step out of a line and touch one named Jesus and see what happens. Nobody else in that crowd did it, did they? I'm sure there were big old boys that could bench press Buicks and they didn't step. That woman stepped. I know what you women are thinking. That's why the men, they, they, you want something done right? You better go get a woman, all right? I'm just saying, put your money where your mouth is. She stepped. Got to give her that, amen? She stepped. So what's it take to build an altar? <laughs> well, it takes rocks, and it takes broken things. There's a genealogical application that is relevant here for everyone in the room, including your pastor. There are volcano explosions in our lives. Seismic events that happen to us. Some, we didn't have a choice in. Some were choices made from that. The grinding of life will bring rocks and broken things sometimes. You can take hard things and you can arrange them before the Lord 
as an altar. Or you can drag your rocks around and be burdened by them. Or you have another choice. When you get so frustrated lugging those rocks and broken things around, you get mad at people and then you throw them at people. Usually the people you love the most first. Or the way you build an altar is to bring those hard, broken things before the Lord. And you put them there. And you say, here am I. Here am I. I'm broken. I got rocks. I got junk. I got stuff. Here they are, God. Here they are. And quit lugging them around. Quit acting like they're not there. Quit living from them and be set free. If you want to see God move in your life, if you want to see God do more than you could ever think or imagine in your life, you have got to give up those junky, nasty, broken things that happened to you, that were said to you, that you were put through, sometimes not by your choice, but sometimes out of those choices, okay? You need to take those rocks. You need to take those broken things. Instead of throwing them at people because you're frustrated, take them as you and come and lay yourself on an altar. And I promise you, every altar is an encounter with God. And when you get up from this, you walk out, but this does not leave because you've laid it at His feet. There are some of us in this room right now, we have never, ever taken the broken things in our lives, the rocks and the explosions that have happened around us. And we haven't laid them as an altar before the Lord at all. We've tried to navigate them and hide them from people and live around them and pretend they're not there and say we're okay and I'm fine when you know you're not. You know you're not. If you go on in that Isaiah passage, mm, said he pulled a coal from the altar. And he touched his lips. And he said, I am a man of unclean le lips and I live among a people of unclean lips. Your healing is right here. It's not lugging them out, it's laying them down. It's not taking them out, it's laying them down. You simply come to the altar, just like you are. Say, God, I repent. I confess. I submit. I yield. I die. Less of me, more of you. Strip me. Put in me the things of you. This morning, church, mm -hmm. You've come into his courts. You've come into the holy place. Mm, you're a step away from the holy of holies. His train is going up and down these aisles. He's in the house. You may never get the opportunity again, but he's here today. Mm, don't miss him. Step out and touch him. Take him at his word and see if he won't do 
for you what he did for her. Hey, thanks for joining us today here at the Church at Bushland Online. Hey, if you were inspired by today's message, we'd love to hear from you. Just drop a message in the comments or you could email us at info at the church at bushland.com. We'd love to hear what God's doing in your life. Also, man, if there's anything we could agree for in prayer with you guys, just text the word pray to 806-557-1800. We believe there's power in agreement um, with the Lord. And so um, if we could pray for you, just do that for us. Um, and if you'd like to connect further with us through social media, uh, just search the church at Bushland. You can find out more things that are coming up here um, and get involved that way. And then if you'd like to plan a visit, uh, we'd love to see you face to face. We have services here, 9 a.m., 1030 a.m. every Sunday. You can go to our website, thechurchatbushland.com and plan that visit. And we look forward to meeting you that way. Finally, man, just thanks again for joining us. Pray your faith was encouraged and we look forward to journeying with you in the days ahead. So have a blessed day.